Our sponsors this week are Wayne Walker Quality Meats. Everything you need for everyday meals. Quality meats at affordable prices. You can find all the information within the description. They are located in Great Howard Street. Give them a follow. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome to Billy Moore's podcast and today's guest is a young female called Tori White and Tori's got a, a brilliant journey, it's quite exceptional, I enjoyed reading about you so forth, why not get you on? So, let's start from the beginning, tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about yourself and your journey. Um, well, I'm Tori, I'm 21 and I'm an online coach from Liverpool. Um, back in the day when I was 16, I used to weigh roughly about 17 stone and I lost about eight stone in nine months. So when I was 17, I was like eight stone, which is insane, because I lost it all so fast. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the any of losing weight, because mm-hmm. I read it in the paper, it was like, it was incredible how you, oh, you, thank lost, you. You, lost, um, you lost eight stone. Yeah. In nine months. Yeah, it was really, really rapid. And there was no surgery? No, nothing. All so natural. People, <laughs> people are going to say that, and now you've yeah. be, you become like, sorry, uh, an online PT, yeah, and you're helping others, yeah. So, tell me, did you, you know, growing up, did you did you suffer with like depression, and, and why was your um? Yeah, um, as from it young as I can remember, I was always depressed. It hit more in secondary school, I think, because you had the influence of boys and cliques, and like everyone in school was lovely to me, but I never felt like I fit in, and I feel like that was a catalyst for a massive weight gain. Because looking back at pictures, when mm. I first started school, I was never extremely big. I had a bit of puppy fat, but it was nothing concerning. Mm. And then the longer I stayed in school and the longer I didn't like myself, that's when it just started to balloon, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Was your, um, was your, did you have friends in that in school or was your, did you just feel like it's yeah. different? I had, I had friends, but I, I never really felt accepted not be- because of anything on their behalf it was yeah. always in the back of my head where they're like they're shopping in forever 21 and i'm too big i can't fit into that or they're going to a party and there's going to be boys and i was like yeah. i wanted to sit in and read and i think my coping mechanism as well was trying to be the funny one or like yeah. the person that people kind of take the mick out of or do you know what i mean trying to make myself look stupid because that was my way of fitting in yeah. i couldn't fit in with being like cool or trendy or anything like that so i don't think that was just my way i think what we do is we mask our insecurities 100%. Mm-hmm. you know with um with other things yeah you know i, I, used, to, I used to myself you know i used to be the class the class, class joker because not because um because it was overweight or and it's just because it was just like i couldn't communicate with anyone yeah you know, i felt different because i had um I, I didn't have the same clothes or you know you know yeah. what they had on so how was that going through school and stuff? It it was tough. I kind of threw myself into my studies and for that I'm really grateful because I ended yeah. up with a really good education. But I do feel like I missed out on quite a lot yeah. because I was kind of my own saboteur in a sense where I kind of isolated myself mm. because of the fear of not fitting in and the fear of being like shamed and things like I don't like that. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it does, yeah. Did, did you have a lot of that going in school, like getting shamed and name calling and it wasn't like name calling per se or like n- no one actively went out the way to be horrible to me it wasn't like that it was more in my own head yeah, which i yeah. think this is what i'm trying to push my message today is all about perception because like for example if somebody walks into to a gym and they're overweight they think oh my god everyone's staring at me but in reality everyone's just getting on with the day yeah. it's a perception thing and it was the same for me when i was younger so in school, we used to do this thing that we called the loop. You know, Sefton Park? Yeah. We'd run round Sefton Park once. Yeah. And I remember it so vividly. We'd always have it just before lunch. And because of me, we'd always be late to lunch. And everyone was like, oh, I can't believe we're late to lunch. And I always thought, oh, everyone's upset with me. Everyone hates me because yeah. I can't run and all this and all that. But that again, that's just a perception thing. And because I didn't like myself, I assumed that everybody else didn't as well. Yeah. So this is what like, you probably suffer with. By the sounds of it, like low self esteem. Yeah, Jesus, this... I had anxiety, depression. It was, it was awful. Talk about that. Talk about your mm-hmm. your anxiety and your depression. I mean, like going from school and, and going into the big bad world as well. Yeah. No, because it's um, it's a doggy it's... dog world. Exactly. <laughs> um. Well, food. Even at my smallest, food was always my coping mechanism. In in a sense, um. 
So when I was bigger, if I was stressed, if I felt like upset, any emotion under the sun, if I was happy, I'd always resort to food. I remember I used to come downstairs and I, I, I've been in the media a lot and people always blame me mum, but it was mm. never my mum's fault because a lot of it was secret, a lot of it, because I was ashamed of it myself. Mm. So my mum didn't know I was eating two lunches. My mum didn't know I was going round to my nan's for another tea. Or I used to come downstairs at four o'clock in the morning on a weekend and make I, buttercream. I, I still do. <laughs> yeah, I used to make buttercream because my mum stopped buying chocolate. Yeah. So I used to go into the cupboard and mix butter and sugar. Now that's a problem. That's that's That was on my behalf. And then... I went too far the other way because, again, I couldn't cope with those emotions. I had no coping mechanism where I restricted myself. What were the emotions much. that you were you were feeling or experiencing? I was, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit suicidal. I absolutely just hated myself. No, I couldn't s- couldn't get up, couldn't get up, didn't want to open the curtains. I'd lie, I'd lie in bed. I'd always say I'd, 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 I had a reverse sleeping pattern because I'd wake up at 6 and go to bed at 6am because I just... That was just my... Because I didn't want to go out in the sun. Even on holidays, I used to stay locked in the bedroom because I was mm. so... I'd, I'd look in the mirror and break down crying because I just couldn't cope with the, way the you things looked. in my mind. So yeah. the, way, the way you saw yourself, like you said before, perception, mm-hmm. was not the way other people saw you. Probably not, no. No, no. It's, uh, you know, we, all, we all look at and the first thing we yeah. focus on is flaws. Exactly. You know, we look mm-hmm. for flaws. I think, you know what? I never came out this morning with that ash. <laughs> if I walk past a, a window and it, there's a reflection, yeah. it's um, uh, and we can tune into stuff. So your perception of you is, is so skewed. Yeah. Because if you think about it, you've never seen yourself from a outsider's perspective. You've seen things like pictures, mirrors. They can be very, um, what's the word? What's the word now? They don't show you the way that you actually are. So if you're looking at a mirror from down here, you're gonna think, oh my god, I'm disgusting. But people don't look at you like that. They or they see you from a you see yourself at a bad angle and go, oh my mm. God, I look horrible. But people just go, oh, that's that's Tory, that's just you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You find the worst it's in like, everything. Yeah, it's, it's the day. It's like, I, yeah. you know, like the filters that people throw on. Like, I can't, mm-hmm. I can't, can't I, even, I can't even look at you. Yeah. You know, you don't throw a filter on. Yeah. Right, you know, and, uh, you know, yeah, there's, there's different angles and people take pictures from different, mm-hmm. you know, different positions that make them look better. You know, I, you do it, the lighting, yeah. the shadowing. But to accept yourself for who you really are, you know, that's, that's, that's... That's hard. That's hard, isn't really it? Really hard. And is that what you were finding really typical to accept yourself? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, tell us a little bit about how you've, like, transformed from... What what changed? Come on, come on. Because, you know, this is for everyone. This this mm-hmm. is a diverse podcast. It's, um, it's I'm open yeah. to have anyone on. And, and I've, I've guessed you've had challenging journeys, mm-hmm. life-changing journeys. You know, it's not all about villains and criminals and... You know, might, that might sell for some people, but people it's who... not real. No, it's everyday lives, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. You know, yours is, you know, yours is extraordinary in the sense mm-hmm. of, like, five foot two. Yeah, five you foot two. Have, <laughs> you know, you must have, like, 17 stone. Mm-hmm. Come on. Well, I feel like the turning point for me weight loss was... Um, it was coming up to year 11 prom, and I went to... I, I'd never felt beautiful in my life. So I turned around to him and was like, I want to feel... A million dollars because I saw my sister when she was my when she was my age at the time no. going to a prom. I remember going, oh my god, she looks absolutely amazing. I was like, I want that for myself. And I went to go and try on dresses, and I had to go to a specialist shop because places like Topshop and things like that, because there was none of this a sauce, a sauce plus PLT, whatever we've got now. It was just Topshop, River Island, that's a lot. Mm. Um, they only went up to a size sixteen. So then I remember trying on a size twenty four prom dress and the, the zip bust and I was stuck I remember breaking down and crying my eyes out in the changing rooms and that was that that was the straw that could break the camel's back from then on I haven't turned my, I haven't looked back completely turned my life around from that point so it was that moment that was like mm-hmm. that was the catalyst that, yeah. that was the motivation uh-huh. so and, 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 and what did you do come on tell us, from, tell, us tell us that journey of like you know going through like the mental well-being of it all yeah. you know I feel like there was definitely a lag on the mental side of it. I mean, I think it's very easy to... Well, not very easy. I'm probably saying that from a Your, skewed perspective. Yeah, yeah. But from my position, it was easy because I'd never went on a fad diet. There's no tips or tricks to losing weight that I can't sell. Yeah, yeah do this diet and you'll lose X amount of, amount of weight and you'll keep it off. That doesn't work like that. Mm. So what I did, I, I'm a big believer in flexible dieting. So I turned my... My guilty treat was a KFC. 
And I just turned that into homemade KFC. And from there, just swap and swap and swap and swap until I finally got my health back. Do you know what I mean? But it was the mental side that was so challenging because from... When I lost all my weight, I struggled with body dysmorphia because I did yeah. it so fast. Yeah. Well, I, for years afterwards, I looked in the mirror and I was like, I still see 16-year-old me. I still see me who's obese and hated myself. And and then I did... Um, sorry, getting a bit emotional. I oh, um, it's okay. developed bulimia. Um, sorry. Mm. sorry. <laughs> never spoken about this. No, um, please feel free in your own time. <laughs> So from the stress with uni, I um, started to make myself be sick because when I was stressed, I'd take the food and then I couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry. Take your time, take a deep breath. Yeah, so I struggled with bulimia for quite a while in uni and I thought to myself, you need to go home, you need to leave, just focus on yourself. And then from that point, I found self-love and meditation and things like that and I do genuinely believe that you can kind of fool yourself into a better mindset so I used to wake up every morning or even on a night out or out with my friends I used to go you if you act so much more confident than you are it'll rub off on you if you wake up and you tell yourself even if it's a joke even if you don't believe it I am the most beautiful powerful person in the world after three days three weeks three months or however long it however long it takes for you you will start to believe yeah that I am worthy, I am gorgeous. And yeah. I do genuinely think that little affirmations and little ch- simple tweaks in your perception of things, whether you're maybe your glass, glass half empty, where you're like, oh my God, I've got 14 stone to lose and I've only lost three pounds. Oh my God, I've lost three pounds. That's amazing. Yeah. Simple changes like that can't half do wonders for your mental health. And since then, I've never felt better in myself. So- Focusing on the positives, yeah, and that self talk because yeah. we do, you know, we're great at selling ourselves, mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, that we're the world's worst, yeah, that's on it. You know, I used to get people saying to me, you know, what would you tell little Billy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I used to go, oh, oh shit, I'm cringe, you know what I mean? Why don't you give little Billy a hug? Yeah, you know, that little Billy inside, yeah, and I just go, like, you're oh, weird, sure, mate, you know what yeah. I mean? It's not my cup of tea, but I get what they're saying, yeah, I get it's like, um, what we tell ourselves is what we believe. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I, you know, that is, is quite positive. For people out there who, who are struggling with, with their own self-esteem and, and weight management and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know, just tell yourself, like you just said, that was a good one. Instead of saying, I should have lost this, in fact, you know, be grateful yeah. for what you have lost. Exactly. You know I mean? Or you can turn around and say, I may not have lost a pound this week, but I'm so happy because I was stressed from work and I come home and I didn't binge. Hmm. I'm so proud of myself. Like I like what I said in the paper that was quoted um, as one of the headlines was treat every small victory like you've won a war. Yeah. And I think that's so powerful because that if you constantly have a negative loop going on in your brain, that's going to turn you sour. Do you know what yeah. I mean? If you have a rotten banana and a big fruit bowl, all the other fruits going to turn rotten. But if you take that rotten banana out, it it do you know what I mean? It's going to completely affect the way you process things and the way you think. Yeah. And the way I like to, the th- a saying I like to th- say is, if my friend come to me with the same problems, mm. or like if my com- my friend come to me and said, oh, I'm this and that, what would you say to your mate? You'd say, oh, shut up, don't be stupid. Or look at the bright side of things. Like life's got its funny way of working out. Or like, oh my God, I'd say if you didn't get a job interview, it wasn't meant to happen. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. meant to happen. Or... But when it comes to yourself, you automatically go, I'm a failure, I didn't yeah. get it, oh my God. But if you kind of change the inner dialogue and try and not even just be aware of it, do you know what I mean? Have an awareness and just be like, oh, I, I, I was aware then that I was thinking negatively about it. Yeah. Maybe just try and shift it's, your perspective. It's, it's so powerful. It's always for me, it's always been about playing the take forward. Yeah. So I'll play the take forward and I see an outcome. Mm-hmm. And with an outcome, there's a consequence. So if I look at the actions prior to that, and they're thinking, you know, because we thinking leads to feelings and feelings lead to actions and mm-hmm. actions lead to consequences most of the time. Yeah. You know, there's that, there's that, it plays in that way. Exactly. So I could sit here and I could be thinking, does he think I'm a dickhead? Have you ever thought of 40 so, does he think I'm this or does she think yeah. I'm that? So I'd, you know, I've been down that road where I thought, does he think I'm a dickhead? And then I'll believe that he thinks that I am. And, and then that'll create 
Not that Anxiety you're, you're, in your brain, yeah. Any anger? Yeah. Before I know it, I'm on the floor mm-hmm. wrestling with them because of something I've told myself. And it's the same. So that kind of stuff is, uh, you know, you could be really detrimental. Yeah. So it's something what you said there, it's having that awareness. Yeah. Having that awareness, having that understanding. Um, that breath separates Oof. the men from the boys. Yeah. Are you go to that. You reassess the situation. Go, okay, maybe I was overreacting a little bit, or yeah. or well, maybe I, that was my brain. I didn't manage it too well before on the way here when I reacted over the phone. I should have, <laughs> I should have took a breath and you know, and I'm, I'm reacting, and, and and but I feel least, bad about it. Yeah. You know, and I, and I know it, and, and, and I'll reflect, and I, and I might make amends. <laughs> I say I might. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't think he deserves it. But, you know, yeah. that's the stuff that um, that we're up against that challenges in life yeah. anyway. Life's hard enough. You don't need yourself knocking. You, you can't physically progress forward if you yourself are pulling you back. Do you know what I mean? You're attaching. Um, like It's like th- tying a brick to your shoe and jumping in the river. Do you know mm. what I mean? That that brick is the mind blocks you're putting in place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even if you cut it in half or slowly chip away at it. I'm not saying it's got to be done overnight, but that kind of... If, if you gain that sense of awareness, you know what steps to take in terms of transforming your whole mind. It just, it, 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 it amazes me that we're all going through our battles. Even, like, f- when I was your age, I was, like, yeah. I was on the receiving end of the police all the time. Yeah. You know, I was in and out of institutions, and that was my battle, and that was my journey, and that was the fight I, I had with society. Yeah. And that was probably because he hated myself, and he hated everyone else, and it, I, 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 I developed an addiction, uh, and, and your addiction was food. Mm-hmm. So there's your battle, there's your yeah. journey. I know it obviously didn't take you down to the, you know the same path as me. It doesn't have to, but it could. Yeah. Could very well, you know, you could very well lead you to like uh, acting out in other ways. Yeah. Okay. So I've, I've um, I'm feeling this way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna react to this. I'm gonna. It's the same principle, different situations. It is. So it, I just get to, I just see it as like you know, we're all human and we mm-hmm. all, we all struggle and we all have our, our issues and problems. It's just how we t- we deal with it. Yeah. I mean, and you're such a young age, and you've got you know massive awareness. I I was, <laughs> I was quite thick at the um, at the age of twenty one. In fact, I was like, just a knee fandery. You know what I mean? I never had I never had any uh, emotional or uh, like understanding yeah. of how I felt. And I'm quite grateful for that because I've got such a wonderful mum yeah. who has taught me these things from such a young age. She's always been my biggest fan in a sense where she's always she's taught me a lot about perception she's like why why are you putting yourself down why are you putting obstacles in your way before you'd even do it like like my personal training it's i still do it now sometimes which shows you that you it still can happen um before launching i was going oh my god what if i'm awful or what if i only get two clients and i'm and and, but then now i've got the awareness where i go why are you thinking like that you haven't started throw yourself out there what what, what's the ways that can happen do you know what i mean so what was growing up like with your, your parents, uh, was it was it just an average normal yeah. everyday home life? I, I couldn't have life. couldn't have had a better childhood really. I mean, in terms of like family and things, I've got such an amazing support network with mm. my sister, my mum, my dad, my nan, everybody. Everyone's just been so supportive. Like in school, I struggled in sixth form because I was anemic. I think because of the such a long time of eating crap foods mm. like all i'd eat was chicken nuggets and chips i developed anemia when i was like 17 i ended up passing out on the floor all the time um so i had to leave sixth form because mm. of it and i was crying going i'm not gonna get into uni and my mum was like just this is just not your your life's path yeah. do you know what i mean and she taught me that from a very young age if something happens it's meant to yeah well, and yeah that's she yeah, it took me a long time to, uh, to get that that, that understanding that like all we need to do is let life unfold. Yeah, take because, take you on your journey. I mean, it's it's it. When we're inadequate and we feel insecure, we try and control things around us. Yeah. You know, I I kept trying to control the environment, control the people, mm-hmm. and I could with the way I looked. You know, and that was like a coping mechanism for yeah. me. I looked hard, I looked soft. You know, I had half a year. I had that wave. Mm-hmm. And if I look at you in an intimidating way, I could kind of change. You regain that sense of power. Yeah, yeah, and and that was because I felt really insecure. Mm-hmm. You know, and I tell I tell you I'd fight anyone, you know, and I would, yeah. and and most of the time I'd come off second best, but it was just the fact that I'd do it. Yeah, you know, and then get that that label of like he's crazy, he's around a bit, and then, and there's again it was all coping mechanisms for yeah. me. It was I became like a ball of barbed wire, mm-hmm. and no one would go near me. 
right? It was like, keep it away from me. And my world got really, really, really small. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until in the end, I had to kind of just get humble, put mm-hmm. my hands up, and, 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 and ask for help. Do you feel like, you know, it's something totally opposite of what I've just said there, but did, did you have to like, just reach out once, just ask for help? And did, was that something that you could, was easily come easy to you, or did you find it difficult? Um, I found it difficult in uni, definitely. Me, I'd never told my mum about yeah. me, the way I was controlling food. Um, but once I did, it was so cathartic. Yeah. And it was nice because she was like, I feel like, especially it's so prevalent among women and men. When you're going through it yourself, even things with depression, depression's so common. Mm. But when you're in that situation and you're in that deep, dark hole, you go, I'm the only person that feels like this. Oh my God. Mm. And you kind of go, Nobody else would understand me. I'm in this all on my own. But as soon as you, my mum's always said a problem shared is a problem halved. Mm. And once you reach out and you make that step, like for me, it was ringing my mum going, I'm really not having a good time here. Yeah. Um, yeah. It shows you. Oh, maybe she understood because she told me when she was younger she had issues with food herself. Where she, she had, a, she went severely anorexic, not severely anorexic, but she controlled things with her portions. And I'm like, well, oh, me mum understands. She knows what I'm going through, and now she can help me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I do feel like, even though it was hard, it was really worth it. Do you think today? Do you think that a lot of people who do reach out, mm-hmm. young people especially, get dismissed? You no, know, especially girls because. Because, yeah. you know, and this is not me being sexist as any way. No. It's the more, like, the, 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 they're overly emotional compared to, to men, aren't they? In a sense, it's like a bit more dramatic. I wouldn't necessarily say they're more I'm dramatic. I'm for this part of um, I just feel like men, I don't know whether the society, biological, don't know, but men do tend to compress. Like, I think the rate of, a suicide, of suicide is higher for men. It is. Because I feel like there's that stigma yeah. where you're like, I can't open up, I can't cry, I can't express my feelings because I'm a man, which is completely wrong. But women probably get a rap for being dramatic and yeah. over-emotional and this and that because we are so open, open about yeah. it, whereas men probably feel exactly the same, but because they compress it and they go, yeah. oh, lad, I can't talk to you about my emotions. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, they don't necessarily get that same label. No. No, and I'd say there's a thin line between um, anger and vulnerability. Yeah. With, with men especially and I think it's a it's a good point it's, it's, it's that line it's like I feel comfortable in anger than I do getting vulnerable yeah. and saying look vulnerability is uncomfortable it's uncomfortable and it's um, and the first time I experienced it I was about 30 mm-hmm. right I'm, I'm not going to lie to you I was I'd been through hell up until that age literally like yeah. like total destruction and I was I destroyed people's lives as well as my own um, and, and I got to this this this, this rehabilitation that was we had to shit in this circle. Yeah. And it was therapy. It was government funded. They couldn't. They had no money. Yeah. They just said, "Look, do you yeah. want to get your shit together? We'll help you." Treatments, six months, right? Mm-hmm. And I went. Um, I thought this is the last, last chance saloon for me. And I sat in this um, this circle, and there was a seventeen year old girl in there, and she she was bad yeah. on the ale. She was an alcoholic, but she'd been. She'd been sober now for a, for, a, for a good six, seven weeks. Yeah. And she challenged me, and I didn't know what a challenge was. And she said something to me, and um, it kind of really, like, it kind of really hit me, hit me there. Yeah. I mean. and it, was, it wasn't the fact that what she said, it was the age and the, the way she delivered it. Yeah. It was like, fucking hell, she's quite intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She just said, look, you know, you're masking, you know, your anger, you know, you, you feel really, um, you, you're a nice guy. No one had ever said to me I was nice yeah. and I was okay and I was decent. You told me I was a, I, I was a cunt or I was a twat and anything. I go, yeah, sound. You probably internalised yeah. that label yourself. I, 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 yeah, I believe you. Yeah. When you say to me, Billy, you know what? I think, you, think you're all right. I think you'd either fancy me. Like, <laughs> whether you're a fella yeah. or a bear, you know what I mean? Or yeah. I didn't know and I was like, all right. I couldn't take affirmation, basically, yeah. you know what I mean? But that was, the, that was the journey for me to start getting... To get getting really vulnerable, getting open, and that changed my life. It really did. Mm-hmm. When I start, when I put my hands up, my look, yeah, all right, I can, I can, I can, I can act like it's tough yeah. to me. But in reality, you know, I am hurting, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of contributing factors. That's why I asked you what you, what your um, what growing up was like, because in the background for me, there was a lot of contributing factors to why I behaved the way I did. Yeah, different errors. You were 
born probably like twenty years later. You know what yeah. I mean? But back then, it was it was it was it was it was as tough as it was for me. Mm-hmm. So if for you, it, it it wasn't like that. You know, there was mm. nothing in the background. It was just, it was just myself internal. Yeah, my internal. But I think a lot of it was to do with like the things that kids now are quite lucky because the media has completely changed. But when I was growing up, especially, it was all how to look like Cheryl Cole, how to be super skinny, how to drop inches from your waist. And I'd go, yeah. well, or they'd, they'd put like sob stories where they're like, I was so unhappy with my weight. I was 12 stone and now I'm 8 stone. And I'm like, she's up not unhappy with her weight and she's 12 stone. And I'd go, well, that makes me feel even worse now. Or mm. like, or you see like Cheryl Cole getting slated in, in the paper mm. and you go, why is she getting slated? She's got everything I ever wish I could. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So then what does that mean for me? And you kind of compare yourself a lot. That's a big one, that, in the comparisons. Yeah. You know, the first thing the first thing I did was I compared myself to everyone else. Exactly, yeah. You know, and I compared myself to um, the way they looked and what they had. And, you know, my bus passed to their car. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I was addicted to comparison. Yeah. And that, that caused me to be really um, contempt. Yeah. You know, and um, I, I couldn't, like, you know, I, I just... It, it was then it was it was again it was it just built a lot of hatred and resentment mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i think like the media does a lot of um creates a lot of resentment in yeah. society and it's the media doesn't make no money if people are happy no <laughs> that's why when you when you open the paper well. yeah, yeah when you open the yeah. paper it's always man stabs such and such or like there's never there's never really much positive stories which mm-hmm. is why i was so shocked when i got put in the paper yeah. because i was like Maybe this is this shows that there has been a turning point that they are publishing something that's positive and that can help people and rather mm. than just publish man jailed for robbing. Do you know what I that mean? That Liverpool echo is just shit. You know, <laughs> in some areas, yeah. you know what I mean? It is. It's 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 I'm 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 fed up reading about like like all kinds the of drip and drab yeah, and it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's let's let's focus on like what the city's got to offer mm-hmm. in a positive way. Yeah. You know, uh, and your story popped out um, in, in, in compared to the others, like murder is getting life and uh, and robbers and shoplifters and heroin addicts and this, that, and then this, this, this young girl has changed their life and challenged depression and, and overcome bulimia and overcome yeah. a lot of weight loss. And, you know, and I was thinking, oh, she's got to have a, a sort of that surgery yeah. and all that, because it's, it's a big drop. It's a big change. And then I sat there and I thought, you know what, I'm going to ask her, does she want to come on and speak about it? Because I thought, mm-hmm. and I said to my missus, I said, well, what do you think? And she said, that'll be great for other people. And when I spoke to you, it was about like, you, you didn't believe in um, in fad diets. No. What, so do you believe in like like the likes of calorie counting? Is that important? Do you, uh, what yeah. kind of like, what's your daily or weekly, say, meal intake? What are you doing now to manage it? See, I... I feel like, especially with weight loss, yeah. counting calories is quite important because it really is just an energy balance. People want to blame carbs, people want to blame sugar, they want to blame this, they want to blame that. It doesn't work. You can cut all your carbs out of your diet, but that's because it's all about an energy balance. So it's all about your calories in, calories out. That's as simple as it is. As it is. So if you're burning 2,000 calories a day, if you're eating 1,800, you'll lose weight. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a bit yeah. more complex than that, you know what yeah. I mean? But the basic principle is that... Um, but for now, for me, I'm quite happy and comfortable with my body, so I tend to eat what I want. And mm. no, but that's because I've got the knowledge in my head of. <laughs> Which I have to, have to be honest with. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't go and have a chippy all the time, or yeah. like I'm still healthy. But it's just because I've got that knowledge in my head where I'm like, okay, well, I will have like a chicken stir fry for me tea, and I have all of my meals from like Whole Foods, and mm. rather than getting something up crap out of a packet and then I'll go you know what I worked hard tonight I will treat myself to a donut that's one thing that does wind me up is guilt and cutting out certain foods and yeah, yeah. and villainizing certain things when yeah. it shouldn't shouldn't happen I think it, you, it should be a lifestyle and not yeah I can help you lose a certain amount of weight in six weeks will you keep it off probably not yeah. because you've villainized all of these foods you've restricted yourself to eating rabbit food for six weeks yeah. what are you going to do after you've lost the weight you're going to go back to eating the way you were yeah, and yeah. you're going to go and put it on again i've tried it like all well, i've said you know i i sing like an avenger to yeah. <laughs> and i eat I, i'm going through about what seven eight meals a day yeah loads of high protein i know yeah. what i'm eating you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's like high protein and a bit of bit of rice tuna Jack of potatoes, stuff like that. Yeah. So eat a lot. Mm-hmm. And I do villainise 
I like that certain word. Foods. Certain foods. Yeah. Like yesterday, I wouldn't have a pancake. Really? Like, I <laughs> and I'm saying to me mates as well, I said, do you have a pancake, lad? And he went, nah. He said, nah, lad. He said, I hope you haven't. And I was thinking, you know, I never, I just had a yogurt, but then, you know, I feel as if, like, I'm neglecting myself as well as some areas. And that's just by mindset. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm mid forties. Mm-hmm. I think I look really well, and I say now yeah. for uh, for me age. So I'm not doing too bad. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's 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 just an ongoing battle. I think for the rest yeah. of your life. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be like a slob. I'm, yeah, seriously. it's finding the balance that works right for you. Yeah, because it it is so personal. It's not a one size fits all. Because, like for example, somebody who's Double the size of me can get away with eating double the things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But or like, I, what I like to ask my clients is, what's your trigger? Do you know what I mean? And I've got a client. I hope she doesn't mind me saying, but she absolutely loves Pringles. Mm. So I said what's to her, pop? <laughs> in, <laughs> instead of eating Pringles, which are around nine hundred thousand calories per tub, yeah. a you... packet of Pombers is sixty nine. <laughs> you yeah. could have three of them, yeah. and you could go because you've had to sit there and open. Each individual packet, you're going to go, oh my God, about three packets of pombas when you've literally cut out yeah. 500, 600 calories. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? It's little little tricks and tips like that that really help me lose the weight. Yeah, but have I seen three packets of pombas there and then I, 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 I compared it to one empty silver Pringles? I think you're greedy for that. <laughs> you've had yeah. them, them three packets there. I walked in the other day, seen packets of what's it's all over the floor. Yeah. The floor. But they're only light as well, yeah. I mean? but it's um, yeah, that's it's it's a good way of uh, of, of I call of, it eating smart. Yeah, eating smart, eating smart. I, I like the idea, but yet still for me, you know, it's 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 different kind of training. Yeah, you know, when you build them muscle, or, or when you build them, or you're going for for body like losing inches and, and weight. Yeah, there's difference. So, yeah, yeah, calorie intake, slimmer whales. I think that's a load of shit. You know what I mean? I've heard loads yeah. of bad stories about it. Well, the thing is, they, they go off like sins and free food and yeah. actually rice and pasta are free and yeah. they encourage you to eat as much of it as you want. One serving of rice, basmati rice is, and it's so sad that I know this, yeah, um, 247 fast, calories for one serving of basmati rice and that's free. Yeah. So you'll go, I'm going to have a big massive bowl of rice because that's free. You've just ate yeah. 800 calories there. Do you know what I mean? It's massive. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's massively... The, uh, the the things you can eat and, and and the way you can kind of you can justify it. I think so, it's unethical. So what do you think of uh, like there's these, 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 there's a lot of diets and I've got a few friends yeah. who are on a high fat diets. Really? Right, they're yeah. on high fat diets. I don't know what to call them. I don't know what it's called now. Um, oh, keto or Atkins, the keto, isn't it? Yeah, the keto diet. Got to make sure, and he's lost loads of weight on it. And they're eating cream and they're eating this and loads of sausages and what have you. I'm like, I'm just eating porridge, me. Yeah. I'm on porridge and egg whites. Right, I'm on porridge, egg white, and I'm on all three or four chickens a day mm-hmm. with a little bit of rice and, and, and some tuna as, as well. So, and they're eating all this. So, it's different. Different for different people as well. Yeah. Again, keto is Fucking just. Diet is shit, aren't The whole premise of a diet is just energy balance. The whole premise of it is so with keto, you're cutting out a whole entire food group, you're cutting out carbs. So that instantly is going to get rid of 500, 600 calories your daily intake. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because if you cut out rice and pasta from your diet, you'll be like, I've got nothing left. So it, again, that's just one way of cutting things out. If it works, yeah. it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. But like, I hear things online about sausage roll diet. Remember the Subway diet? Where people no, eat no. Sub- People apparently lost weight eating Subways every day. I was like, how, with, how can with you bread. do that? Your yeah. bread's bread's full of estrogen and it gives you breasts and everything. <laughs> and especially for men, it's like, it's full of yeast and it's quite quite like yeah. filling. I I Stodgy. avoid. I, 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 I tried like I tried into intermittent fasting. I've done that yeah. and I tweaked. I went like for twelve weeks and I lost what about twenty eight pounds. Yeah. Like, and I was, but I was training and everyone quite quite felt quite weak. Yeah. Because I was lacking in carbs and the energy was like it was reduced. Mm-hmm. But the weight was good and I, and I looked ripped. Yeah. You know I looked quite good for it. Went down from what sixteen eight to fifteen stone in, in that time, and I managed that. But like you said, it was um, once the, uh, the the discipline went and the the routine, yeah. And then I'll have that, and then I'll have that, and then this, and then it's, it's just, not sustainable when you go back. No, to I've, it. I've gone back up to what's probably the same way. I was back to sixteen, so yeah. like so doesn't. That's one thing I want to help with my clients is finding and one size doesn't fit all. It's yeah. finding the swaps and the 
impl- implement things that work for you and your lifestyle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So how long have you maintained now, like, your, your, your balanced weight? And... I've been roughly the same weight since, like, 17, 18. It took a few years, though, yeah. wasn't it? And what have you started? You've started, like, a little online. Online coaching. Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us what you do and, and how it helps people. Um. Well, what I do is... um. Clients will obviously come to me with a goal in mind and I'll give them a nutrition plan, a training plan, maybe a one-to-one and help them. I think a lot of clients um, and people probably benefit from having the accountability, having somebody to check in with. And I like to feel like, I don't, like, because when I was a bigger girl, I remember, I, my mum and my nan offered to get me a PT and mm. I went, I'm not having some girl who's been skinny all her life tell me what to do. She doesn't understand how I feel. So that's one thing I'm so excited that I can offer to my mm. clients who, who's looking for to transform their lifestyles mm. is a bit of empathy because I can understand where they're coming from and I can be like, well, this this worked for me, so why don't you do this? Or I understand how you feel, but pick yourself up and we'll go back again tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I also... I also want to push for positive mindset and self-love. I want to set little challenges where I'm like, right, you've got a challenge, you've had a stressful week, do a face mask. Yeah, and have yeah. a glass of wine in bed because it's about balance. It's, I don't want to be that person that restricts somebody because once that restriction's gone, like you said, you're just going to go back to what you think's normal. Yeah, fuck, you can't fucking abide by rules pretty yeah. well, me anyway. You know, so you stick them rules on me or yeah. restrictions, and I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm a Probably rebel with that, of course. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I do. It's like, uh, I, 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 see, I've got that. Uh, mindset where I'm alright through the day and manage everything pretty well. Yeah. I'm great. It's so, the night time. It is, it's the yeah. night time. It's not even the night time like from from like like six o'clock up until bed. It's like when I'm asleep. Yeah. Right. I'm like a secret lemonade drinker. I'll get up and I'll find myself downstairs in the fridge. With a bottle of lemonade. Yeah, no, I might get not a bottle of lemonade, <laughs> trust me, it'll be like a bar of chocolate. Well, my girlfriend said she, she comes down and she's she me and it's, it's not me. Like <laughs> yeah. a zombie shit. And I'm like, I don't know what, I've got all sauce all over me and I'm eating anything, you know what I mean? And, and I feel yeah. bad. I feel guilty. I feel really, really, yeah. like... Again, because there's that villainization of certain foods. Yeah, but I'll, I'll say that with this. I feel shit about myself, yeah. you know what I mean? And I think, oh, it's like... And I beat myself up. And I think, if I gotta go through life just, just beating myself up over yeah. food, come on. You know, keep it simple. Don't take the piss. You know what I mean? It's crazy how much it can it can affect people, isn't it? Because yeah. it's something so natural. So like biologically, that's what we've been designed to do. Yeah. It's something so natural. Yet we've completely turned it on its head, and we've attached guilt and restrictions and emotions what, to it as well. That's what it's, that's what it's yeah. attached to food. Yeah. And this is the, this is what the podcast is about. It's about like management, weight loss, food, and what's attached to it? Attached to food is addiction. guilt. Addiction. Addiction. It's addiction. It's this guilt. Okay. Uh, some people go, well, well I, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Shan't crack on with it. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I mean, you have. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Other people do. I, p- family members do. I've had uh, my, my young niece you know, send a message to my girlfriend yesterday saying, you know, she's feeling, um, she's feeling like really, uh, she's suffering with anxiety. And, you know, st- that, that, where does that lead? Where yeah. does that go? You were close to um, to ending your life at one stage. You said, you know what I mean? That's yeah. No. I mean, luckily, I never, I didn't go through. I'd, it was just more the thought the of it. It was like, well, well, I'd obviously be better off dead because I don't like myself, and you you convince yourself nobody else likes you, and you put it down like no one yeah. likes me because of my weight. That's completely that was completely false. But it's yeah. again, it was my reality in my head because I was seeing things through such a skewed lens. Yeah, I think. Uh, it's that this is this this is is quite an important podcast for for, for young women yeah. women of all ages as well as men yeah. really it's a it's prevalence it's prevalence in, in everyone's life isn't it mm-hmm. it, it, it affects everyone you can't it, avoid food no 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 so how's it um how's it how's it been you like your online course and what's the PT that you're doing you know read about you doing you, you know you went from seventeen stone. To, to, to become a PT, which yeah. is, you know... Which is... It's crazy. If you would have turned around to me at the age of 16 and said, you're going to become a PT, yeah. I would have turned around and gone, 
go away. I wouldn't even go on the treadmill. I'd walk in and I'd sit on the bike and I'd go, I'm not going on the treadmill. Yeah. Two months later, I was in the weight section. Two years later, I'm a qualified personal trainer. Yeah. I think it's crazy. It's just, yeah, but it's quite a lot of label. A lot of people are like, claims to be PCs, not online. I don't yeah. do it here. With you no are, qualifications and nothing you know, to Everyone's a fucking PC on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. Time, See, I think, even though I am qualified and I do think it's very important to get a qualification, it still means naff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you've gone home and you've done research or you've been through it or you do you know what I mean? It it doesn't really mean much. There's experience. Yes, exactly. For you. And I d I'm one person, I'm never I'm never stagnant. I'm never what's the word? I'm never happy with where I am at the minute. Well I am happy but I'm always striving for more. So even I could finish work at 10 o'clock of a night. I'll still go upstairs and watch YouTube videos, I'll read studies and because I want the best. I possibly can for my clients because I don't see them. I know a lot of PTs yeah. who see it as a money making machine. I want to take as many clients on as I possibly can. That's not it for me. That's that's not what the whole yeah. point of this is. It's because I really want to give somebody else the help that I didn't get when I was going through it. So it's a genuine. Yeah. A, you know, there's a genuine I'm motive. Actually, I actually care. Yeah, and that's that's that'll make your job more rewarding. Yeah. Is your, the Doesn't, fact that you know you're given back yeah. something that was freely given to you mm-hmm. it's uh, 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 and, and it's it makes you know your life it doesn't feel like work no it doesn't that's well, no. That's, well that's good because there's an old saying and I probably some people have heard it and most people haven't it's like you know you only keep what you have by giving it away yeah right? and that was um, when Sean said that to me Bill you need to give it away what we give you and it wasn't money or you know or, or, or external things. Yeah. It was experience. Mm-hmm. It was awareness. It was understanding. It was yeah. knowledge. Yeah. See, so you're upstairs and you're studying. Most people don't. Mm-hmm. No, I'd love, and I've got a mate who, who who reads books all the time. And I think I've wrote two books, right? But I can't be asked. Really. <laughs> yeah. We hate that, you know. You know, I'm an author of two books. I've read them. Yeah. I've sat down and I've read them. No, so I can claim to be an author. Yeah. I've written them, I've edited them, and, and I've published them. Yeah. Right, and, I, and I've sourced out uh, the ways to do it. Mm-hmm. I was good at that. But to actually sh- sit there and read a book, it was just, can't be asked. I go on YouTube and, and I try and watch uh, stuff and I lose interest. Yeah. My, my uh, like capacity of like... <laughs> I thinking is just like quite short, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's I I think I feel quite envious of people who can do that. Because for me, it's 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 I'm constantly striving to add value. What what can I bring? Because at the end of the day, they're investing money in me yeah. for me to help them lose weight. I'm trying to add as much value as I can, and if I have to sit and read five studies for one bit of information that's going to help one client I will yeah. because there are people who won't go home and won't research it. That's probably why they needed a PT in the first place. Because they don't understand what they're doing. And to, to be honest, I'm sorry, you know, I, I, you, can, you can read up on about one thing, it, it'll give you 20 different Yeah, opinions. exactly, exactly. You know, we were, we were, we were doing a, a tricep workout this morning, you know, in the garden, and it was like, you're looking at these YouTube videos, me and everything, we'll do the best three. But then it's like what the best three. What is the best three? three? See, the, the best three. It was just, just things that, you, so, someone else has got something different. You yeah. Know what I mean? So yeah, it's like finding the right information that fits you. That fits you. Mm-hmm. So is that what you think you're doing? Do you think you you find the right information for a, a, a certain individual? Yeah, no. Or for everybody, because not everybody's the same. That's really, yeah. That's where we struggle, isn't it? I mean, I do feel like the you have to give a sense of personalization for each person, and I think that's why it does take me quite a long time to get the workout but it's so worth it when because n- not no two pe- people are the same like you said so I could have one that will thrive off no carbs or I'll have one that'll thrive off lots of carbs or so it's just kind of like you've, you've got to personalize that specifically or you've got one that um can't jump in the workout so I'm trying to find alternatives and this and that there's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes so you know you pay your PTs and that you're saying and what is it that you like you know physical stuff because there's a lot of like we talked about the food yeah. The diet, the weight loss, mm-hmm. uh, activity. Obviously, it's important, but it's obviously there's, there's there's people that can't really do much as well. Yeah. You know, so we're not here to say, oh yeah, everybody's got to do this. You know, there's the five ways to well being. Yeah. You know, we talk about like getting up, communicating, going for little walks, even movement. You mm-hmm. know, which is important. So do you go through all that with them and say, so what? Yeah. 
you know what what's his abilities if any yeah you have of and, course you know where do you where, where, you where are your fitness levels where because i've got people who are coming to me with four kids and things like that's so why i said blitz the house that that gets you up moving think about it you're squatting down and cleaning surfaces you're reaching up and cleaning the cupboards that's still you're gonna burn calories calories and um I burn calories just going on the toilet. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> or go for a walk with, yeah. with the kids or get the kids involved. That's what I say. Yeah. Like there was a fun workout that I did not long ago with a, another man who I did a podcast with called Jason. Mm. Um, we did a 62 car pickup, but each suit was dedicated to an exercise. So say if it was hearts, dips, um, spades, burpees, things like that. You can get the kids involved, mm. get everyone active. I do. Yeah, they're quite active in our family. Like, yeah. I mean, there's lots of work and my brother as well, he's got autism maybe taking yeah. taking um, he's just he's he's been raising money you know, for a long time, you know, he's going a lot down yeah. for the uh, for great causes. But what I've noticed in him, he was quite big. Yeah. Uh, he's changed his whole diet. He's cut out bread. He's um he's cut out all the the, 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 the rubbish Unnecessary. Food. Now, this this is my brother, he's quite he's forty he's forty three. Yeah. And he's he's got he's got autism. Mm. Um, and he's quite he's well loved and people not, uh, yeah. people love him I, I love him he's the, he's the best thing that's ever happened to me mm-hmm. and the weight that's dropped off him is incredible he's, he's walking through the day up hills and he's he's, 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 um, he's training overnight yeah so that is just his way of his lifestyle and he's phoning me and he's asking me and I'm just saying because he doesn't know I could put a plate of like fish heads on the, on the, on the table <laughs> yeah. and he'll eat them yeah. because he doesn't know any difference it's just mad he's just a non-refuser of food he mm-hmm. can give him anything and there's nothing that he doesn't like it's yeah. weird you know, I'll take him to a, like a Thai restaurant or something and he'll just shut on chilies yeah. it's mad you know what I mean so he'll, he'll, what's put in front of him he'll eat mm-hmm. and he was getting bread my mum's my ma she's old school he's a loaf you know what I mean yeah. it's bread's on the table he just eat the lot it's, really? Yeah, so he, he, he did start as a blue, and I started to feel a little bit concerned about his health. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, he's just he's a flying. Tall, flying. He's running. Oh. You know, you can see it on the vids. He's, he's sprinting. Yeah. He's, he's, he's up and down hills. He's, um, and, he, and it's, it's amazing. And he's inspired. See, this is what you're doing as well as, uh, as my brother. He's inspired people to get off the couch, to go for a walk, yeah. to exercise a little. People, I get messages all the time saying, if it wasn't for your Joey saying what he said, you know, I wouldn't have got off the couch today. So, I wouldn't yeah. have got out of bed. Mm-hmm. And I've gone for a walk. You know, uh, I want to thank you. And that, that, that to me, right, it's, see, I don't answer all the messages. So, you know, just let you know that I do acknowledge them. It, it laid me thumbs because I was sick of that. <laughs> it does, there's just too many. It's buzzing all the time. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's nice. It does, I do acknowledge them. And, 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 and the, you know, I do take notice. And when people are saying it's amazing, but... Yeah you're doing right so this it, it, see where you're saying before this is where, where I'm coming to there's nothing in it for me apart yeah. from seeing other people benefit exactly and um, that's the, the reward it's so if you're in it for fucking money you know I know we all need to pay the bills but if you if that's your, your sole motive yeah. then you know it, it, it's, it's, it's you're it's, never going to go far in life if the only no. purpose is for money money comes and goes it's yeah. what's in here that stays with you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, we agree. But yeah, so I don't know if there's any parting words or if there's anything you'd love to say. You know, I always say at the end of a podcast, have you got any um, pearls of wisdom? Pearls of wisdom. Anything, yeah. Here's something, right? It, uh, make it easier for you to understand. What would you say now to Tori? And she was 16, 17. You make me whinge again. Right. <laughs> what would you say to her walking through those doors? Um, you know, I know that you've said a lot already, but yeah. you know, just, just something, like a pale of wisdom. Come on. Take each day at a time. Yeah. And don't be too hard on yourself. Don't be the reason that you, you're you holding yourself back. Just let it go. Let life take you wherever it wants to. Yeah. So with that, I'll put all your socials yeah. on in the description mm-hmm. you know, it's been a pleasure sorry oh thank uh, you thank you very much for uh, coming on my podcast and we'll also um, we'll also give any information that people need in the description yeah to contact you yeah and thanks I'll leave it there oh, thanks so much for having me on it's been great it's a pleasure